Among the many major trends in the spotlight this year, Open RAN and industry collaboration are two of the most important and potentially impactful. So I'm talking about these topics today with Caroline Chan, Vice President and General Manager, Network Business and Incubation Division at Intel, and Raj Yavatkar, Chief Technology Officer at Juniper Networks. So with 5G deployments ongoing and in many markets well underway, why is Open RAN such an important factor in the wider 5G context? So traditionally, if you look at radio access networks, they were served by two or three vendors using a vertically integrated architecture where all of the system was provided by a single vendor. For geopolitical reasons, that number of vendors is also reducing. So the telcos have gotten together to form this alliance to really disaggregate the vertically integrated architecture that RAN has into what they call ORAN, where each of the components, such as radios, uh, distribution unit, central unit, uh, RAN intelligence controller, they all can come from different vendors and can still work together using open interoperable interfaces. Why are telcos doing that? They're doing that for multiple reasons. One is they want more sources of innovation, more competition, cost reduction, and finally, they also want to be able to achieve supply chain resiliency. So that's why the ORAN is beginning to play a major part in the 5G infrastructure. The second reason for ORAN architecture being important is that ORAN architecture is based on cloud native architecture. That brings agility in terms of services new defined as well as delivered, uh, scale that cloud native architecture brings to you, and finally, hyperscaler like automation to reduce the cost of total operations. So those are the two reasons for which I think the ORAN is playing a major uh, role in 5G infrastructure. Okay, great. Thanks, Raj. Uh, and Caroline, from your perspective, why is Open RAN so impactful in the 5G market? Well, first of all, Raj said it very well, very thorough, thorough. The only thing I will add, just emphasize a bit, is that 5G really is about going into different verticals in addition to serving the cell phone business. When you go to different verticals, you need to have integration with the IT and the OT world. So observability in addition to the cloud native performance becomes very important. Having the ORAN uh, open architecture will allow the underlying network to expose the telemetries. And through open APIs, it allows the uh, observability to be implemented easily for the IT world. So for us to truly reflect what 5G can do for digitalization, the ORAN architecture is a must, is a huge enabler to achieve that. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks uh, both for that. Now, uh, Juniper's focus is on experience first networking or EFN. Uh, Raj, how does your 5G and open RAN strategy make EFN a reality? Yeah, so that's a good question, Ray. So I think uh, for us, the true north has become experience first. Rather than only focusing on delivering highly performant, highly reliable products, we are really focusing on changing the way our customers and end users experience the products. So when you apply that to the 5G ORAN, we find a great opportunity to take EFN and make it a reality in the following sense. The first of all, we're making sure that we're building a cloud native platform that will automate integration of all of these components I talked about. When you disaggregate the ORAN architecture, you get components coming from multiple vendors. And one challenge is how do you integrate them in a timely manner and also keep on maintaining their life cycle. So what we are doing is using a cloud native platform. We are automating both the integration of these components together, but also automating the life cycle management of these components so that day zero, day one, day two operations can be automated. So that really delivers a very different kind of experience to telcos in terms of how do they manage the infrastructure. The second part is, like Caroline said, I really like her point. 
ORAN also opens up observability of these networks by giving lots of telemetry. So what we are doing is that we are using AI ML based predictive analytics, uh, closed loop automation and root cause diagnostics for automated remediation of any faults or events you see. Together that also changes the way our end customers as well as operators will see the uh, network and they operate the network. And finally, if you look at uh, ORAN, ORAN architecture also does one more thing. RAN intelligence controller is now the operating system of the RAN or a brain of the uh, RAN. And that has open interfaces for anybody to write X apps for things like spectrum optimization. So together with those X apps coming from either Juniper, from third parties and our own RIC, we can truly deliver now experience first networking because the operators can now in real time optimize the operation of the radio access network. So those all these factors together is our strategy for delivering EFN. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm sure those uh, points will resonate with a lot of uh, network operators around the world. Um, so uh, next up, what role do ecosystems such as FlexRAN play in bringing 5G and open RAN to market? And how does it benefit end users and network operators? Uh, Caroline, let's come to you first on this. So about 10 years ago, when Intel first started looking into enable a cloud native network, we recognized our role as the horizontal infrastructure enabler must play is to make it easier for all our partners and, and our customers to go to market. So we came up with the idea of a flex reference, which is a software stack that tracks the 3GPP development feature development, and also tracks our gen-to-gen -gen silicon uh, platform to really create this tight integration with the software stack that runs uh, best on the uh, Intel architecture. We deliver that through API, through close collaboration with partners like Juniper to enable them to go to market much faster and to deliver the, the end result to end users like uh, our, the operator customers much easier to ease the go-to-market headaches that our customer will have otherwise. Okay, excellent. Uh, and, and Raj, from your point of view, how important is FlexRAN? Uh, so in my opinion, FlexRAN is uh, truly the only horizontal platform that Intel has provided for uh, third-party ecosystem players to add value. So at Juniper, we are working closely with Intel in enabling third-party developers of machine learning and AI-based X apps that can add value by providing functionalities such as scheduling, spectrum efficiency, and automated RAN operation. So together we believe that this will create a very thriving ecosystem of players that provide a necessary functionality for 5G ORAN. So how are Intel and Juniper collaborating within the FlexRAN ecosystem? Raj? So as I said earlier, I think uh, Intel has really established something which is the only uh, unique uh, horizontal platform to establish an open ecosystem based on FlexRAN. We are taking that and working with Intel in multiple ways. One is that we have taken our cloud native routing stack and combine that with Intel FlexRAN to deliver what we call Juniper cloud native router that can go into 5G infrastructure. The second part is that we are investing in a SMO, uh, RAN intelligence controller and end-to-end -end orchestration. Together, these things can bring together the value of uh, a 5G ORAN using Intel FlexRAN. That's our partnership with Intel in terms of creating an open ecosystem. And lastly, as I said, the RAN intelligence controller allows through open APIs for anyone to add X apps, uh, machine learning and AI based X apps for things like spectrum optimization, optimizing the operation of the radio access network. We are working jointly with Intel to create such X apps, but also bring in third party X apps to integrate in an open manner. Okay, excellent. And, and Caroline, what's your view on this collaboration? This collaboration to me is what FlexRAN is designed for, is to enable uh, 
strong players in in different domains like Juniper to come in and participate in the ORAN ecosystem, make it easier. So like uh, Raj mentioned, we're doing pre-integration code development. Our engineering team works hand in hand with Raj's team. And we, we're having multiple front of discussions with expose API to them and, and vice versa to really create a strong tight end uh, of, of the of the two parties uh, software together. So the idea is by the time you go into the end users, like the operators, they, are, they will be easier to uh, roll this out in the market. Okay, excellent. Um, now, in terms of 5G overall, everybody in the industry, service providers and their customers are looking for use cases. Uh, what are the critical components and enablers for 5G use cases? And what are Intel and Juniper doing to bring these use cases to life? Raj. Oh, that's a great question. So as you said, uh, 5G's biggest value is the use cases such as ultra reliable low latency or massive machine to machine communication needed for IoT, self-driving cars and so on. Both these use cases depend on the network providing guaranteed quality of service with respect to bandwidth and low latency to each of the users of the 5G architecture. So for example, if you have an enterprise or a virtual network operator using the RAN as well as the 5G infrastructure, they need to provide, uh, they need to get slices of the infrastructure, which are end to end. They go across multiple domains such as RAN, transport, core, and so on. And you have to provide the isolation of traffic from each other and performance guarantees for each of the slices on end-to-end -end basis across these multiple domains. So what we are doing with Intel is that we are investing in end-to-end -end orchestration that can operate in a multi-vendor environment. So imagine that you have multiple vendors implementing RAN or transport or core infrastructure. We are making sure that each of those domains will have its own orchestration of slices within that domain. But across these domains, you can think of a meta orchestrator, end to end orchestrator, which stitches together slices in multiple domains to provide end to end slice that provides those guarantees. And that has to operate in multi vendor environment. It's not about just Juniper. So we want to support all the vendors which can bring value there. And Intel is leading that effort because Intel is a neutral party, making sure that we have an open end-to-end -end ecosystem. Excellent. Thanks, Raj. Well, these are all really important developments for the industry, for network operators around the world. Raj and Caroline, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Ray. Thank you.